Welcome everyone. It's a great pleasure to have with me today Professor George van den Abele. Uh, Professor van den Abele is the former dean in the School of Humanities and he holds a number of positions now in the School of Humanities. He's uh, in the Department of English and he also has some additional appointments like in the Classics Department, the Department of Modern Languages and also in the Department of Philosophy. So welcome, George. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. It's a lot of fun. Good, good. Thank you for being with us today. So, George, um, the recipe that you picked is the perfect omelette, but uh, where did you learn how to make it? Okay. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. the recipe? The, the, the story behind it was... Um, my uh, my aunt, um, uh, who I stayed in for a while uh, in Brussels, and uh, uh, and we decided one day to visit my father's traditional village in Flanders. We're um, a francophone Flemings, which is we speak French, but we're ethnically Flemish, which is a kind of a bad category to be in in Belgium because uh, you know no, nobody really wants you there, right? Um, and the, the Flemish nationalists call people like me uh, Franskion, which is an insult. Of, uh, you know, someone's gone to the other side lang linguistically. Um, although day to day it doesn't matter because we get along and we tend to speak, you know, in between the languages anyway. That's kind of how we we live. But we went to my father's little village in Flanders, a town called Barnum, and uh, you know, an old house. Uh, and we, you know, it's kind of uh, time middle of the day, um, we were hungry, so she pulled some eggs out of the refrigerator, let's make an omelet. And the idea was not individual omelets, like most often one does in restaurants in the United States, uh, or even people do this, you know, someone cooks an omelet for every single person individually. Uh, it's the American way, I guess. Um, whereas this is a, you pick a very large omelet that could be, you know, kind of a part of a family dinner for several people. Or, and um, so that's the idea of making like four or even a six egg omelet, which is already an interesting question. <laughs> that's what um, we do in Italy too, but we call it frittata, as you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, the difference, I mean, the, 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 the frittata works the same way. The only difference is in uh, uh, the French style, you're cooking it in the pan and then you cover the pan and flip it. And in the Italian, you put it in the oven and have the heat coming down. So it's downward heat or upward heat. I guess that's the argument. And uh, I won't <laughs> make a decision on which was the better way to do it. I know, I know better than to go there. Um, but but the, the, the key thing that, that she taught me was basically, you know, whisking it a very long time. You know, as long as you can stand to kind of beat the eggs and you get more air in them, they're you know, fluffy, it tastes better, it cooks much more smoothly. And that's the idea. That, that was a fundamental thing that she taught me and the other thing was you, you you heat the pan up very high and right before you add the omelet into the pan turn it all the way down to the lowest and um, that lets you cook it really fast and then slowly which is what you need to do otherwise you're going to burn it and you know and anything you can't stand as a and I was burnt on one side and soft on the other uh, things like that I mean, those, are, those are the monstrosities and risks Yes, um, that's um, great cooking. to know. I will yeah. definitely um, take note of that because it's a very good tip. Sometimes I've noticed that when I make frittata or actually yeah. I do, uh, by your standards, I'm making omelets all the time yeah. because I don't yeah. put them in the oven. Um, uh, I think that sometimes I got it burnt on, on one side and maybe not yeah. cooked enough on the other side. That's very that's great, much a great tip. Very common problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the funny thing about omelets and in general preparations with eggs is that we tend to think that they are very easy to make. And in a sense, they are. But on the other hand, eggs present their own challenges because yeah. there is always a tipping point whenever we are trying to cook them from boiling eggs to, to from boiled eggs to mm -hmm. frittata or, uh, or omelette, yeah. where if you go past or uh, stay you know, don't get to the tipping point and something goes wrong. And, yeah. um, and so it's a matter, as I always say in this uh, 
in this series of cooking with a professor of knowing how to do things. It's an yeah. art. You have yeah. to have good instructions, but also realize when you are getting there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it, it's 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 an art. So, I mean, you can have a recipe and it can look like chemistry, but you've got to be making decisions all through the time, just when you feel it's exactly right. Um, yeah, and I kind of indicate in the video some minutes, like, you know, I usually think, you know, four minutes, five minutes to beat the eggs, four minutes to cook on the low heat and then turn it off for another three, four minutes. I mean, that lets it solidify. So then you can slide it out of the pan. It folds easy or flips easily um, uh, and doesn't get cooked to the bottom or be too soft, too soft and then you can't manipulate it. Mm -hmm. These are all like really, uh, and, 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 and I would say, I mean, I, I can only give an example of what I do, but it basically you, you, you learn by doing, <laughs> yes. you know, by you feel your way out. But these are yes. some tips that I got that I thought were helpful and kind of make it fun. Yes. And so just to chat with you a little bit more, uh, when did you first come to the U.S.? I came to the U.S. when I was uh, 10 years old. Oh. Um, and um, uh, actually, uh, but my parents first emigrated to Canada. Mm -hmm. First, uh, you know, my father had been in a camp in the war and this kind of once he got a, a degree in architecture, he, my parents, they just wanted to leave Europe, period, <laughs> uh, which was a bit of a problem when I wanted to kind of learn French and Italian and continental philosophy and spent time going back. It was kind of, uh, why do you want to go back to that old place? <laughs> um, but we emigrated to Canada and uh, the grade school I went to, uh, everybody was from a different country and spoke a different language. So it was very interesting uh, to do that. And in fact, um, I learned English off uh, Canadian television because when we got there, we shared a house actually with the Polish family and I was starting to speak Polish. I was, you know, <laughs> just a kid. And then my, my, uh, my parents got upset. Some doctor said, well, he will never learn any language properly if you don't insist on he speaks one. So then they decided they better speak English all the time rather than French or Dutch um, or, you know, there are Polish neighbors and whatever. So, uh, television was the answer, um, and uh, I do have still sometimes people notice light Canadian accent. I, I don't hear it; sounds normal to me. Um, but uh, it was kind of um, an interesting way to 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 learn a language that way. And as a matter of fact, um, it wasn't going to create a problem because I think on the contrary, I have a great facility with learning many languages. Yes, and I think it came from this early exposure to lots of different languages and trying to talk in them. Um, yes. and so whoever this doctor was, his fear was unrealized. And in fact, uh, it was, he should have encouraged it rather than discouraging it. So um, I have to ask you, how many languages do you speak then? <laughs> Um, well, I think uh, six or seven that I, that, I, that I feel comfortable with. I mean, not just like I can, you know, read something with a dictionary. I don't, I don't count that. But, uh, you know, I knew no. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm fluent in French, of course, and I'm a native speaker between the two. Although I should be a native Flemish speaker because that's originally what we would have spoken and then moved around. Uh, you know, Italian, uh, German, and, and Portuguese. I'm, I feel bad I don't know Spanish very well, which is important in this area to, to speak. So it's my ambition to learn Spanish. Um, and then also a little uh, Vietnamese, which is uh, the easiest language to learn if you're uh, a European, uh, easiest right. Asian language. First of all, it's, they, it's in the um, European alphabet. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this was French colonialism. That's why. That's why. and also a lot of the vocabulary in Vietnamese that's uh, technical or um, kind of industrial is tends to be borrowed from French. I mean mm -hmm. things like you know, Nha Ga, which is a railway station, is the same as La Ga <laughs> in oh, I, 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 or Ciclo for bicycle, and uh, mm -hmm. you know the intonations change, but. Uh, right. so, uh, 
So I, I, I know a little bit because I was interested in that. And, and actually, um, um, if you really, I, there's a, uh, a, a, a Vietnamese uh, phenomenologist uh, who um, studied and worked in Paris and was a, a very big influence on, um, on Jean-Francois Lyotard, who was one of my teachers whom I've translated. And so um, kind of a very, very interesting um, uh, phenomenologist. So, yes, yes, so, so that's kind that's of fascinating. I so I, I, I think that, you know, Jamslow, the famous linguist, used to say when they asked him, how did you pick up so many languages? Yeah. He, could, he mastered apparently about 40, 50 languages. He yeah. said, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's difficult with the first 13, then it's easy. <laughs> You no, know, I can't say I've gotten to thirteen yet. And so uh, I hope I. But uh, you know, then uh, you know, other ones become you know different languages, very very different than than than. Uh, I mean, in, in a sense, the European languages. If you know one, you can sort of get between them. In fact, I don't know if you have the same problem, but I have the problem where uh, sometimes they, I, I mix them up. I mean, I remember I was when I was studying German and. Uh, I kept making mistakes by pronouncing things in Dutch or using Dutch right. words. Like, you know, I would always say twenty instead of Svansik and things mm -hmm. like that. And that would drive the professor crazy. <laughs> but, I mean, that was not what you were normally having as a problem. But but then but that's always been the issue. I kind of yeah, have a mixture of them and yeah, it, because it, obviously they, you know, they're too close. So you can Yeah, some of them are so close for us. Yeah. I mean for Italians, obviously the closer ones are Spanish and French. Not so much Portuguese to my mind. I mean, the pronunciation in Portuguese is quite different. But, yeah. but if you see the written language, it's very, very similar. Right. But uh, the way it's spoken, it's actually quite different, at least to my ear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it sounds um, very different, but I, I think I found it uh, grammatically and um, uh, lexically closer yes. to French and Italian. Sp Spanish has a lot of Arabic. Yes, influence in words and differentiates it from the other Romance languages. So, Georges, thank you so much for uh, being with us. Thank you for presenting us with the secrets for the perfect omelet. And uh, to everyone out there, goodbye and enjoy. Bye. Thank you and enjoy. Bye. Bye. Hello. Let's talk about omelets. Um, basically, it's something that seems everyone needs. To seems to know how to make. They're uh, easy and versatile to eat. You can have omelets for breakfast, lunch, dinner, even a midnight snack. Um, and uh, they can also be uh, almost intimidating if, if you spend a lot of time worrying about the customary theatrics of flipping the pan or being able to crack open an egg with only one hand, as in that famous Audrey Hepburn movie, uh, Sabrina. Uh, where she has this anxiety at the French culinary school. Um, but let's concentrate on taste and something that's, that's good, that's easy. And um, what are some of the tricks that are less often taught about it? Um, for uh, starters, let's talk about ingredients. Well, it's easy. Uh, you need eggs. Um, and um, I like to make omelets with four eggs because then you can share it with somebody. Uh, you can make a two egg omelet for yourself or maybe a three egg if you're really hungry. Um, then you can still flip it. Four eggs, I'm not going to be able to flip it, but I'll show you what I'm going to do in order to get you the same effect. Um, I need four eggs max. Uh, sometimes uh, I often like uh, the keto style, so with only the egg yolks. Then I need six eggs and I separate the whites from the yellow and uh, similarly some people prefer only an egg white omelet with no yolks so uh, those are some of the uh, many things you can do one thing is take them out of the fridge a few minutes beforehand maybe five ten minutes beforehand so they come to room temperature and then wash them then um, what i do is i uh, i crack them into a small bowl like this one so that when I put them into a, a large mixing bowl, you're always secure in case you get a bad egg, which you will get from time to time, no matter how careful you are with these things or not. So you can add them and you can uh, be very 
careful about um, things happening uh, that you might not want. Some shell gets in there or something. If you do it this way, you save a lot of trouble. So, now then, what do you add in it? You can add all kinds of things to an omelet, of course. Um, uh, one thing that one doesn't always think about is a little bit of cream, not milk, but um, usually like heavy whipping cream is the best thing to add. And you can add just a tablespoon or two. That actually helps make it fluffier, lighter, and you'll get more air in it. That's the secret of good omelets is getting a lot of air mixed in it when you use uh, your whisk on it. You also can decide what you want to add into it. And uh, I like basically a mix of uh, uh, what we call in French fines herbes, primarily chives, um, maybe a little bit of chopped green garlic, a little bit of uh, parsley, um, or uh, let's see if you can see this a little better. Um, basil, that's good too. Um, make sure you chop it up really, really finely. Uh, you don't want big leaves of things in your omelet or it won't cook. Um, of course, you can add any number of other things that you might like, from uh, you know olives, tomatoes, uh, any vegetable you like. If you want to add a meat, and some people like that ham or sausage into an omelet, you want to cook it separately. Don't cook it in the same pan you're going to use the omelet in, because you want this can, this pan to stay very clean. It's the, the only thing that's going in there is going to be uh, the omelet itself because otherwise you're going to have trouble later um, keeping it together. You'll, you'll have sticking and other problems. Um, so um, usually I use extra virgin olive oil and to pour some of that into the bottom of the frying pan or an omelet pan if you have that and then you want to kind of make sure you get this, I don't know if you can see it well, really swirled all around so that uh, the oil covers it a very thin layer covering the entire omelet uh, dish. Then you need a whisk. <laughs> this is the number one ingredient for making a good omelet is, is a whisk. And uh, if you don't have one, you can use a fork. <laughs> but it's much easier with a whisk. And the most important thing to know about making an omelet is uh, you want, on the one hand, very high heat. So I'm gonna turn this uh, stove pipe on with um, high heat. You want high heat, and I like to let this wait for about five minutes. So five minutes is a good amount of time because that's how much I wanna whip the eggs. And that is the key, you just whip it. In a long, long time, as long as you can stand to do this. Um, but basically, you've got it like, whipped as hard as you can, as long as you can, at least five minutes worth. Because that's what's going to give it the taste, the air in there, make it very fluffy, very light, and very tasty. Let me get a little bit more on this and so you can see it's a little bit uh, like Dr. Seuss right green eggs and ham and uh, that is something that you can um, keep keep mixing keep mixing I'm still only about a minute into it and I'm letting that pan heat at the same time so the trick is what you're going to want to do is get this as whipped as fluffy as you possibly can with as much air as much if you can make this completely bubbles that would be the ideal but I, I can't get that far and I, I'm not sure I want to but you can get pretty far down that road to make it really excellent and at the same time you want really high heat now that high heat is going to cook the eggs really fast so as soon as you as we're done we're going to add the omelet into the pan uh, with everything that's already in it uh, then we're going to turn the heat all the way down. I mean, that's the kind of important thing that you need to be doing is you want the high heat in advance and then immediately low heat. And at the same time, we're mixing this 
up to get this nice frothy mixture and I can show you in a minute or two it'll be uh, a lot of froth on the top that's what you want and uh, the longer you can stand to do it as I said but I, I usually take a good five minutes to do it um, and at the same time making sure that that oil or butter in the pan stays kind of consistently even across it you don't want it pooling in one spot or getting dried out or anything like that um, so that's the basic secret, and then we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, and you can stand to wait <laughs> for a long time. But, you know, think about it as, as, as uh, cooking is also love. And it's about, you know, you, you're expressing love for who you're cooking for and with. And that's part of what uh, takes time. It takes a lot of time. And you're going to make it really, 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 really an expression of your love for whoever you're making this for. And that's again why I'm going for the four eggs because I'm going to split that. Uh, I'm still swirling away after this interruption. I'm going to have about, about a minute left here to go. And, uh, so I think my computer quit on me for some reason. Hopefully it'll be edited together in some way. Okay, now, this is very hot. You can see some uh, smoke rising, very dilly. Now, I'm cutting it down to the lowest I can get. Uh, I've got a gas range, so that's pretty quick. If it's electric, you'll, you might have to kind of play a little bit with it. And add it in, you can hear that. And just, you know, pour as much of this as you, as you can. And then swirl it around so it gets to cover the whole thing. So this is what we're looking at. And um, the next step is uh, to cover it. So get it and cover that thing. And we're going to let that sit for another four minutes or so um, because uh, that low heat um, coupled with the uh, pan cover lets you cook it exactly right. You don't want it overcooked on the bottom and undercooked on the top. That's terrible. <laughs> you could also try uh, to do it uh, the uh, Italian style frittata, uh, which is to actually take your whole uh, frying pan and put it in your oven and hit broil for not too long, like maybe 30 seconds, and then you'll have heat coming from the top coming down and making that omelet um, very exquisite at the right moment. Um, and in the meantime, we're letting this um, sit for a few minutes. Um, and while it's on low heat, uh, I usually like it to stay four to five minutes like that. And then what I'll do is I'll shut off the heat entirely, maybe move the pan over to another uh, burner or, or off the burner entirely, and give it another uh, four minutes or so to really come together because that's the, that's the secret here. If you want to do that and then what we'll do is we'll figure out how we're going to um, uh, serve it. So I'm going to just uh, pause us for a minute here. Okay, uh, we're back. We're not quite ready uh, to do this, but this is the point where if you want to add a little cheese, which I like to do, um, you just take, uh, I use grated Parmesan cheese, I grate it myself, and then just put on, uh, sprinkle it on top, because uh, uh, again, this is going to melt pretty fast, but it will make a nice creamy interior to your omelet. And then cover it up again. And uh, I'll give it another couple of minutes and then um, I'm actually going to turn off the heat on it and let it sit for four or five minutes. So I'm going to uh, give us another little pause here and then we'll be back with the final product. Okay, we're back.
you can see that uh, I can do this without burning my computer. You can see how it moves around now. Okay, now this is looking almost done. This is if you have a 2A gum, you could try to learn to flip it, but I'm going to spare you that. And um, what we do is we take a Then just fold it in half. You can fold it in half, and then uh, it just slide very nicely into a plate. And there you have it a quite beautiful, lovely, luscious. And notice how fluffy it is, almost raised. And the, the ideal would be to make this like a souffle. Anyway, I hope that's. Uh, Helpful, very simple, quick lesson on omelet making. Many of you don't already know how to do it, maybe better than I, but I have a few tricks. People seem to like what I do, and so uh, thank you and enjoy.